Hey, Doug with BNH here, and where are we? We are at Zero Space in New York City, and as you can see, behind me is a gigantic LED screen. There are lights and illusions all over the place, and it's perfectly fitting because right now, what's going on behind me is a test of two new cinema zoom lenses from Arri. These are the first new lenses in their signature zoom line. And on top of that, it's all in conjunction with virtual reality sets. So we're gonna take a look at what the crew here is doing and see just what kind of technology is at play. Come on. All right, I am here with Eve. He is the DP of the project here today. Now, uh, we're all kind of in the dark. Uh, by the way, if you see this flashing light, it's because they're calibrating things. Um, what is the project exactly? What's the name of it or what is it about? Okay, so we are in a uh, LED volume room or uh, LED light wall space. And the project that we're doing today is a fashion project. And the theme of the project doesn't have a name exactly, but we're going with a cyberpunk theme. Um, and we're gonna try and match our lights to our assets. We have a, about 10 backgrounds or assets that we can drop in to this light wall that's behind us that we'll be featuring in a second. We're gonna throw models in there and style it and shoot it and just experiment with the space. This is one of two spaces here uh, on the East Coast and we're gonna uh, try and have some fun and make some art. So I'm here with Michelle from the BNH studio and pardon the lights, they are currently calibrating some stuff. There's a lot of interesting high-tech gadgetry in here behind us is one of the new Aria Signature Zooms. Can you tell us a little bit about the lensing today? The lens themselves is part of a new generation of zoom lenses from Aria to combine with the signature primes. We have uh, behind us the 45 to 135, and we also have the 65 to 300 with a 1.7 extender. That's a massive lens. It's absolutely gorgeous. Uh, we'll get a chance to see it in action. Ari wanted to offer their clients, filmmakers, cinematographers, a new generation of lenses with actually cover uh, the large format sensor that the LF and the Mini LF offer. It is as good as a lens, as a uh, signature primes, so you're not losing anything in terms of optical quality. Right. You have the same telecentric technology that the signature primes had with the LPL mount on the Arri camera. You know, it, it could make your production go a little faster. Uh, especially with a zoom like that, you know, uh, pretty fast, 2.8. Uh, it was an interesting test. Ari was partnering with us. Just, you know, if you have a uh, virtual production test that you want to run with these lenses, um, please do so. So, you know, it's there we are. <laughs> now, this is the first time you've gotten your hands on the new Ari signature zooms. Oh, I'm excited. I'm so excited. I can't wait. You know, like um, I. I normally use a, a different set of zooms, um, you know, in, in the TV world, but I think that um, it's always good to experiment. And then we're shooting with the LF too. So, yeah. I mean, I think we're working with the best uh, as far as, you know, the glass and, uh, you know, being able to like receive and in, intake image. So I'm really, I'm really excited to see what we get here, you know? Here we are with Brian from Choreographics and Wow, um, what kind of setup are we looking at today? The backbone of our um, XR setup, our, our virtual production setup, is a disguised media server. And uh, we're using uh, Unreal Engine as our render engine to render the content. So we have a separate disguise, an RX media server that just renders the footage and then it streams it over a 25 gig network, uncompressed into the disguised media server. Um, we have, uh, today we're using a Stipe Red Spy system that uses uh, a series of dots on the floor to um, identify where the camera is in space. And it allows us to um, then tell the disguise system exactly where our real camera is in space. And then as we move the camera, the asset moves and then it moves and picks up what relation we are in to the background and our subject. It matches the virtual position of the virtual camera to the real position of the real camera to make this illusion work. What are some of the challenges that you've kind of encountered today during setup and also might have in mind for tomorrow when you actually shoot the real event? Well, um, one issue that we're having, I think the main issue is uh, teaching 
the computer and the camera where we are in space. So the camera has to figure out where we are in relation to our space and also define the aspect ratio that we're shooting in, in in relation to the assets that we've already built before the shoot happened. They all have to mesh so that the effect is seamless. Honestly, I think this is going to become a mainstream filmmaking technique within the a few years of now. We work with a VFX company named Crafty Apes and their design team is able to pretty much design any virtual environment they want. And once the system is working then you just like we can push a button and put a completely different environment on the screen like that. Right now this is a real-time example but could this be used also in pre-visualization or any kind of blocking? I think what we're going to see in the future is we're going to see the gaming engine, the same rendering engine that we're using to render this in real time now, used for pre-visualization, used for even before pre-visualization, for pitch visualization. Right. People start building assets and then carry those assets over all the way through. Hey everybody, so we're back for day two. Uh, now it turns out there's actually been a slight change of plans. As you can see, there's some stuff still going on, but most of the content yesterday for the cyberpunk theme have already been captured and I guess now I'm a little past the times. But anyway, I'm, I happen to be speaking to Elijah. He was one of the directors yesterday on the shoot. So how did it go yesterday? Um, it went great. I mean, it went better than expected. I mean, for a 24 hour put together shoot, um, I think it went, you know, really well. We, I was able to get um, around, I guess it was like 15 people together yesterday. Um, it was me hitting people up on Instagram, my friends having favors and stuff like that and getting everybody together. So we got a hairstylist, a makeup artist, uh, production assistants, you know, uh, assistant stylists, you know, and uh, seven models for yesterday. And then, you know, as I said, like Eric and stuff like that has been a huge help in just basically pulling all the stuff together. And also Eves, which is, uh, was our DP yesterday. He did a great job in, you know, helping me tie everything together and also like working with my shot list and stuff like that and the ideas I had. He's on a human side, I'm on the machine side. <laughs> I, I, machines, he directs humans. <laughs> uh, some of us try to bridge that gap. This is, this is Eric, he is the other director on this crew today uh, for this actually yesterday and today um, so now you've primarily designed the backgrounds that we're seeing what is that process like this was a crazy turnaround so we had 24 hours to get all of the scenes together so obviously you know 3d is very laborious so it can go from like fairly simple to very very complex in like a snap of a finger so you know uh, part of the scenes we chose were like cyberpunk sci-fi scenes because there's just like the most assets out there. And also with virtual production, it's easier to like go for a highly stylized look right, instead of like right. photorealism because there's still a lot of kinks in the technology. And then if you don't have a very extensive gaffing like lighting package, it makes it really hard to get that like photoreal effect because I think 90% of like what makes a virtual production shoot really feel good is lighting, real world lighting and real world props. Yeah, I've been seeing that, you know, obviously there's like the light wrap coming from the display itself, which I think is such a huge advantage, but there is still an effort being made to match the lighting with real practical lights, which I like. And the, the results I'm seeing here are amazing. You know, it was really nice to see all of it come together and have it on a different perspective where we're not just using a green screen, you know? Because it would be a very different, like, not as awe-inspiring if it was a green screen. This is the lighting and the color and the mood and the atmosphere that's going to be in the final product. Exactly. Even though, obviously, we can all see the screen, it's there. Exactly. Which is yeah. nice. And it's something for the, for the talent to, to act with, you know, exactly. to, to be in. What would, what would you love to use this technology for? I would love to do this more on, um, you know, sort of, uh, you know, fashion short films or something like that, you know, based off a of brand. And like, because you can literally put yourself anywhere, realistically. Yeah. So, I mean, ideally, uh, you know, I've been uh, trying to push more towards, uh, reach out to more like LVMH brands and stuff like that. Um, doing all of this helps out so we can pitch and get them to know like what the other possibilities are because my whole goal is to merge 
more of the technology into the arts, you know, where more so in fashion. How do you feel about what you did? Like, did you see the finished footage? From what I saw on, you know, just straight out of the camera, it looked amazing. And, you know, with a little color grading and, you know, probably like put some atmospheric CGI elements in there. Um, I think it'll really bring it to life. So no, I'm super happy with it. Like honestly, for a 24 hour shoot, I can't say it could have gone any better. If you have a bunch of people that are passionate about what they do, you know, something like this will happen. We're doing something a little bit different. Looks like we're doing more photorealistic backgrounds as opposed to the cyberpunk high graphic backgrounds from yeah. yesterday. Um, what's what's kind of the goal today? So we finished that last night and today is really more of a little bit of an experimentation. Michelle, Brian's wife, is working with us today to uh, put some choreography, you know, into integrating a foreground into uh, a background that are shot live and, you know, make a sense of realism, you know, into that equation. A video wall, uh, camera, lenses, cinematic feel, right. uh, and that's really today's goal. Is there anything different with the rig today? This morning we brought our set of master grips and we've outfitted uh, the Zoom, the brand new signature Zoom with a master grip and it works beautifully. We're able to control zoom and focus um, realistically with a single operator uh, in a way that is sort of a hybrid between um, the, the cinematic feel of fully manual with uh, the introduction of some electronic devices that give you a little more control that is um, almost sometimes better suited for anything that when you capture live uh, right. performances. Right. The fact that we've integrated the electronic zoom uh, is an extension of what the computer sees as coming from the camera. Right. You know, that right. field of view is completely interactive in real time. Creatively, how do, what does it give us that the green screen didn't? Is the immediate creative, creative uh, sort of feedback that you get from the images you create. Yes. It's yeah. exciting with virtual production because now we can shoot like 10, 20 locations in a single day. We could jump right. around the world. If you want like golden hour for 24 hours a day, it's possible, right? <laughs> That's the dream right there. That is, you want, that, that you is want the... a new planet, you want a new moon, like <laughs> <laughs> now it's a lot more accessible to sure, productions for, sure. for normal people to get their hands on it, right? Um, which I think is the really exciting part is the fact that like now it's not just like ILM that can do this. If anyone with the know-how and knowledge can find a stage with all of this equipment set up, they're getting it to a point where like you don't even need super expensive machines to be able to run this. You can do this on like, you know, two of your like computer screens at home to test it out, right? So you can shoot like a miniature. As a proof of concept. As a proof of concept, you know, it's like your iPhone has camera tracking with AR kit, right? So you could use your iPhone with like a projector at home and get the same effect. You know, I'll be a smaller. <laughs> now I have something to try at home. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> cool. Wow. So that was my first introduction to the exciting world of extended reality. This is far beyond anything I've seen on set ever. What I've already seen is some of the most exciting things imaginable on set. And I've met some really cool people as well. I'm in my element here, I gotta say. High end technology, cyberpunk aesthetic, cool people to work with. It doesn't get any better than that. So, from me to you, this is Doug with BH, and I'll see you next time.